Well, welcome back to the Pew, everybody. I am your host, John Edwards, and here to the left of me, as always, or I guess dead in front of me, right, yes, my right. co host yeah. and co host, Victor Adams. That's right. Well, the, the thing is, everybody, I had a spider bite on my face, so I'm, luckily it luckily wasn't on this side, so you're not going <laughs> to see how gross it is. But, yeah, it's this grotesque. But, anyways, like, it looks like like Toxic Avenger on the other side. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So my my good looks are somewhat you know it's gonna be like Two Face what's his name and uh, uh, two, Harvey that, Dent yeah, yeah yeah so so anyways I'll be like but the thing is I was hoping to get like you know I was bit by a spider so again I joke <laughs> with you like saying man where's my you know spider man spider skills. powers right, yeah right. dude that's a that's I a mean, raw deal get for bit all on the, the pain face by a spider right. and you don't get to hang off all the ceiling the, or anything all the pain and medication I've been taking I would expect something good from it but yeah you know, well you yeah. still would have to like develop web shooters and web fluid so right. <laughs> it would still be difficult and I'm not that smart but dude. you could like throw a car and yeah. swing up a building right but, man I'm sorry you got bit by that spider I know that stinks and glad you're be able to take you were able to get taken care of um, I had no idea until you walked in here it's been a couple of weeks since we've man, seen each you know other me? and I don't really I, I, hear, I say I'm a private person, but I just told everybody. That's right. That's, That's all right, right, man. Now they can pray for you and your spider bite, <laughs> yeah. that it stays where it is and no more trouble. I know you're right. on antibiotics and all that stuff, so we'll keep that in prayer. But, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks. You know, you told me that. I'm like, man, I realize I haven't talked to Victor in a couple of weeks. We mm-hmm. had the obedience episode come out, but we actually recorded that before we did uh, – I did with Bill Donahue. Yeah, which, by the way, if you haven't seen that, guys, watch that. Yeah, awesome. Bill's – he's something else, man. That just was a joy to talk to him about yeah. Christianity and the culture and – you know, Lucy's been killing it on the reels she's right. made of stuff he said and the Superman stuff and the movies. He's just, Bill's just, that's what I love about him, man. Like, just the wonder and the beauty mm-hmm. and the awe he has for everything in life and just his, his knowledge of the faith and of what John Paul II said right. about a lot of things and all that. So, if you haven't checked that out, it's called Smuggling Theology. Check it out on our YouTube channel or you can go and uh, listen to it. It would have been la- two weeks ago on the podcast. But, you know, Victor, it's been crazy. We've been running around. It's no reason I haven't seen you. Um, I've been to, let's see where Conway, Arkansas, which mm-hmm. we had an awesome, uh, mission there a few weeks ago. There was tons of people there. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah 45 yeah. guys at the training. I mean, it was awesome. Um, they're starting a group there and it was just really a blessing and a pleasure to be there with Christy and all those folks. Uh, we went to Phoenix and I worked with Steve, uh, out there at, uh, in the men of Christ. And we had a lot of men show up as a follow up to their men's conference and, and, uh, you know, these guys basically raised their hands at their men's conference. I, I gave them a video where I said, is this all you want or is, are you going to move past this day, right? And, yes, we need these conferences to be like, you know, a bonfire to call moss to the flame. But beyond that, we've got to have more. We've got to have mm-hmm. community. And, Victor, that's what we do in our ministry. And so this was the first time I had a real opportunity to make a video calling men, almost an altar call, if you will, for men to say, if you want something in your parishes, if you want to do more, if this day has set you on fire, then come to this follow-up event. And we had it a month later in Phoenix. And there was a lot of men there. There was a Byzantine priest. There was another priest. There was a couple of deacons. It was just a a well-attended event. And we were able to, to witness the mission, to show these guys what we do in the mission, to give those three talks. And then uh, Lucy made a wonderful PowerPoint where I was able to go through the training and our process of starting men's groups. And Victor, I mean, I've already been contacted by five or six of those guys and a couple of the priests that are saying, we want you to come to our parish. So this is what we want to continue spreading what we're doing. And, um, you know, if you're, if you run a men's conference out there, you know, here we are in Lent, most of them are passing or on the verge of starting. If you're a guy that's running a conference and you want the same thing, you want fruit that lasts beyond the day, then contact us. Well, the one thing that we're bringing that no other ministry I really know of right now is bringing, and that's not to be pompous, it's just what I've seen and what other people are telling us, is we can come in and give great talks that will inspire your men, but beyond that, we can give training and breakout sessions and then come back and do a follow-up event and then start equipping men in your parishes, in your area, to start men's ministry. You know, we've already got one scheduled next year in the Archdiocese of Dubuque with Matt Selby to go up there and basically do the whole conference based on what's next. What are we going to do from here? And it's just such a, a pleasure to do that and an amazing place the Lord has the ministry now is to help men that have been giving their all for years with these conferences take it to the next level with the with the the the, the mission and the and the training and the steps that God has given us in this ministry to help people. Now we're finding another place where we can put this that's going to help long after this conference day. You know, my last stop since then was in uh, Portland, in Oregon City, Oregon, at St. John the Apostle with Ryan and all the folks up there. Had another great mission and started a group up there. And, you know, that's what we want to do, Victor, is continue to help in this way any way we can. It is more apparent to me now, more than ever, that this is what the Lord wants. And 
you know, we've been docile in that and just said, Lord, we're going to try to continue to build and to make this better. And as we have, and we've been docile and resting and waiting on him, the opportunities are coming in now because people are starting to realize we need something for our men in our parish. And this is something that isn't just another program. It's not another thing in a box. It's actually leadership training and a structure that you can build whatever you want in your parish around it that the Holy Spirit leads you to. And it will be powerful because it's built on vulnerability and authenticity and leads men into real relationship with Jesus and other brothers. So if you're looking to do that in your parish or a men's conference, we have availability for parish missions throughout 2023. We are filling up pretty quickly, but we still have some weekends and some of the months. So reach out to us at just get on the pew at uh, just get on the pew.com and go to our book me page and you can, you can uh, fill out our form there and, and, and uh, sign up for a mission or at least call us and let us get in that conversation uh, as far as for the men's conferences, I've got one scheduled in 2024. There's plenty of room during Lent and the rest of the year when you have your conferences for us to develop a plan and work with you so we can help you build a theme that's going to send men into what comes after this and then help you build that in all those places in your area. Final thing to say, the pilgrimage victor is coming up with Father Larry. I am so stoked about that. We've got a ton of folks going. It's going to be awesome. We do have a few places left. I don't know how many because Father Larry just sent an email again today to all his people, so it may be filling up. I haven't had a chance to check. But if you want to go to the Holy Land, if you want a trip of a lifetime and you want to have a great time going with somebody who's been a bunch with Father Larry that's going to say masses in all the holy places and me who's going to – you're going to get to see me take this in for the first time as well too and be able to share what I'm feeling in those moments with you. Uh, And and I, I just want to walk with you and hear what you're feeling too. This is going to be an awesome opportunity to go and walk in the footsteps of Jesus with two people that are going to enjoy it ever as much as you will. And Father Larry and myself, my beautiful wife's going to go. So, so many people have said, I want to meet your wife. I want to know your wife. Your wife you know, so incredible. Come on the, on the uh, pilgrimage and you'll get to meet her. So, all of that starts May the 10th through the 21st. There's still some room. If you want to sign up, go to justagownthepew.com. Go to the book me page and you'll see a thing for the pilgrimage there. Or you can go to our amazing uh, Pilgrimage Partners Select Travels website, select their national travel, Google my name, it'll come up and you can sign up there. But again, thank you, Lord, for all the work you're calling us to, including the pilgrimage, the the parish missions, and these men's conferences. So, Victor, wanted to get all that uh, in there and talked about, we always want, it's the best time on the show, best time we get in front of people to share those things about what we're doing. So, trying to excite people and, and you know, be that whispering ear of the Holy Spirit in their mm-hmm. ear about things such as supporting us through donations or the work we're doing, bringing us into their parish and helping men. But, you know, we've been on this Lenten journey, you and I. I know Bill's episode was in there. He came in to do something in the parish, and so I took advantage of having him in here. And we talked a lot of, about a lot of main things that were neat. But one thing we, you know, that was sort of just a, an extra bonus episode in the midst of the Lenten journey that you and I have been trying to kind of carry people on. Right. And so if you remember, guys, a few weeks ago we started – Lent, you know, what are we doing? What what are our promises? What are we thinking about here? Then we start talking about detachment and the importance of that in Lent. And obedience uh, was the next one where we're talking about the devil wants you to be disobedient and to break these Lenten promises and, and all those things. So I wanted to continue from there because a lot of people have reached out and said, man, this is really helping me. I, I, this Lent, for the first time, I picked one thing instead of just picking some superficial thing. And that's not to knock people. But, Victor, if I was to, like, say I'm going to give up sodas, I don't drink sodas. There's a fridge full of sodas out there that I have left from an event from really from two months ago. And they're still there because we don't let our kids drink them a lot. And I don't – I just got to my point in my life I don't drink them anymore. So if I was going to give that up, it's very superficial and it doesn't matter. And it's really just me taking the right. easy way out. It's like me saying I'll, I'll stop eating spinach. Right. right <laughs> you know the big spinach guy? <laughs> I hear you. Papa's going to be very angry right. with you. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, this is – This is something that I wanted to talk about because I've also, as I've been traveling, you know, people have commented on the Lenten episodes. My wife and I have shared about, you know, the things that we've given up for Lent Mm -hmm. and how we're feeling the tug to some of the things we wish we hadn't given up or we want to run to them when we're stressed or things, you know. And and so as I was praying about this episode and continuing to take people on this journey, you know, here we are in this third week, you know, of Lent, Victor, and and. Many of us are probably lamenting over the things that we chose, especially if it's things that we have really leaned on for comfort or things that have really been an issue in our life that are mm-hmm. keeping us from Christ. We're probably lamenting over those things and then struggling with the sacrifices we chose. And so I wanted to kind of do this episode today on why is it so hard to keep our Lenten promises? Because I think there's people that, that are probably in that place right now. And 
you know, we're probably experiencing experiencing the temptation to pick these things back up, you know, to run to them, like I said, the things that we've chosen to lay down. Because for so long in our life, we've most likely gone to these things for comfort. Mm-hmm. Or it's something that we use to to escape from the world or or just things that aren't good for us that we may not have realized you know, how bad they are for us. But we've chosen to lay those things down and we're probably hearing that little voice in our heads that tells us that going back on it uh, is a good decision and that, you know, it isn't that big of a deal. Well, I mean, you're talking about the triggers, right? There's, yeah. there's things that like <laughs> we're, we're so used or conditioned to soothe us or to get through us through good or bad, whatever, you know, any, any of those things that we like eating a piece of chocolate, you know, like when I want to, or, you know, drink a beer or a bourbon or whatever, or, you know, maybe just kind of like, you know, going out to eat all the time, you know, or, you know, it's anything that you have used to, to be doing yeah. uh, and that you have set aside to either to save money or to focus on not being that an imp- as important driver in your life and to like, you know, detach yourself from it. Um, there, those, those emotions or that stress or that frustrations that you usually felt to say, yeah. well, I'll alleviate it by doing this. Um, they're still around. Sure. You know, and so we have to find another way to accommodate by not going to where we used to in the past because we're trying to change behavior. Um, that's what Lent's all about, you know, changing our behavior and our, our outlook on, on how to deal with stress and pressure, but also to draw closer to Christ. Sure. Um, well, that's know. the main reason, right? Is right. always everything we're supposed to be doing in faith is to draw into a greater relationship with Jesus Christ, like everything. Mm-hmm. All our devotions, all our piety, the seasons of the church, all of it is to draw us back into what really matters in our life and what we should be focusing on. Sometimes I think we can look at Lynn as a self-help program, right? I'm going to use this time to try to detox from something. I, yeah. Look, we've got a lot of friends at, at our church and parish and people that we run around with, you know, that have said every year, like, I'm going to quit drinking because I just want to see if I can, or I'm going to quit drinking because I need to lose weight, or I'm going to quit drinking because, and it's literally like, okay, is this a problem in your life? And if it is, then quit drinking because it's a problem in your life. And this isn't to judge anybody, but Lent shouldn't be a, a time just for a self-help program. It mm-hmm. should be, it, it's pretty obvious in what I'm saying or what I'm hearing that this is an issue in my life. And if it's an issue in my life now, it's going to be an issue in my life after this 40 days or 40 plus days are over, right? It's not just now and it's not some thing where we just, you know, try to grab a rope and hold on to it as long as we can with a car pulling off with mm-hmm. it before we have to let go. It, it's like, no, this is something that is a time to really put the things in my life under a microscope and the ones that are keeping me from Christ, maybe it's time to fully let them go. And so why are we struggling with that? You know, why do we experience the temptations or the, the, the desires to run back to those things during Lent? Well, because you made a decision to turn away from things. Now, I'm ta- again, I'm not talking about making superficial give up things here because we just last minute wanted to do something for Lent and say we did. I'm talking about if you've been listening to us and you really have taken what we've said to heart and said, I'm going to give up the thing that I know I should be giving up or the things that are going to be really difficult in my life to be without, then this is what I'm talking about. The reason that it's become hard is because you have made a decision in life to turn away from the things that are keeping you from Christ. And when you've done that, the devil knows those were things that he used to keep you distracted. So basically you're on his radar now. Mm -hmm. You become a threat to him because Victor, think about it. Like if we're not focusing on Christ and not focusing on, um, you know, getting into a greater relationship with him, becoming closer with him, allowing ourselves to know him better so we can better know ourselves then most of the year we're probably spending not paying a lot of attention to Jesus you can go to church you can go to things that you're doing in your parish and check boxes and and never really be trying to get closer to Jesus you're just going through the motions and if you're just doing that then the devil's not really concerned about you because he knows okay that person's like there's a there's a show going on Mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to insult anybody but like this is, there's a half-hearted effort. There's a lukewarmness there. And so I'll take lukewarm all day versus someone who's literally turning their eyes back to Christ with an effort to return to him. And I've been reading this book that's been awesome for Lent. It's it's like one of those, Sister Miriam had one last year called like Behold or something mm-hmm. like that. I probably messed up the name of that. But Father John Burns, who I love, uh, hope to have him on the show soon. He's got a book that came out through Ave Maria called Return, and it's got these awesome videos. He's like walking through an actual desert, and he's just taken through it. And this is the first year where I've sat down with a book that's meant to like journal and all that. And I actually got a separate journal 
So Angela could use the book without all my notes being in the way if she wanted to. But like a really pondering all this stuff and it sort of moved my mind to this very thing is, you know, the, the devil doesn't care about you when you're not really caring about Christ. When you turn is, is when he's going, uh Oh, and you know, Victor, you know, I love to fish Mm -hmm. and you know, there's bass fishing where you're constantly doing something. You're throwing a reel and you're reeling it in. I mean, you're throwing your line, you're reeling it in, you're throwing your line, you're reeling it in. But then there's like catfishing where you're sitting on a bank or a boat with your buddy and you kind of throw some chicken liver or a, you know, a, a, a stink bait or maybe a minnow or something on your line. You put a bobber on it and you throw it out there and you just sit because you're waiting on something to basically swim by and eat it. And so you don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. But when you're in the middle of a conversation and all of a sudden like you, hey, 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 man, your bobber, your bobber, mm-hmm. your, your, your pole's moving. All of a sudden, then you grab it and you start reeling like mad. Well, that's what the devil does when we start to to turn towards Christ as he starts to put these little carrots or these temptations out there to lure you back to that lukewarm place. Because once you've made that turn to Christ, he knows there's a very good chance that you may come to a greater understanding, a greater love. There may become a moment in your life where his enemy, God, pulls you back. And that, Bill even alluded to this on that episode where he talked about the screw tape letters and how, yeah. you know, the young man or somebody was in the, the museum of art and, and God placed a thought in their head, you know, that when they were looking at a beautiful painting that drew them back to the Lord. And what did Wormwood do, right? He triggered his stomach. Yeah, yeah he right. started going, oh, you're, are you hungry? Right. You should get some lunch. And then he takes him outside and takes him on this journey away from that picture and away mm-hmm. from God. And that's what the devil wishes to do with this. So this is why we're experiencing these temptations is, is if you have done something and made a firm agreement in your life that I'm going to get rid of this or I'm going to turn back to Jesus, the devil doesn't want that, not just because of you, but because of what you can, how you can now free other people. Well, and that's the thing. Lukewarm is a pretty much a definition of not being certain. Yeah. Uncertain, life of uncertainty, where you keep going back and forth or flip-flopping, as we say in the modern world, to where you say, yes, I want this. And you go, well, maybe I don't need that. And maybe maybe I should do this. And so so you're never really in a firm, uh, firm, I guess you say, grounded in the actual yes. Yeah. And, and that's kind of where that limbo of, of the uncertainty that, that, that the enemy tries to keep you in. Even though you're a good person, you know to treat people well, you're not growing, you're not really moving anywhere, and you're not like developing anything that's really substantial in, in, the, in the growth of faith. Um, and I think that's what Lent is, Lent is, is enacted by the church to say, okay, guys, now is the time to contemplate on what Christ did for us. Sure. You know, with all the sufferings he, he did for us, how he died for us. He didn't have to die for us, but he wanted to. He willingly died for us. Let's focus on this and not focus on the, the noise in the outside world. And and I think we, we kind of do injustice sometimes because you say the triggers come in. Yeah. And like I said, third week of Lent, guess what happens? Dang it, man. I forgot I was you know, not, not doing this, you know, whatever. Yeah. But then, you, you know, God loves you. He says, okay, well, just, you know. Focus back your attention towards me. Yeah. And then, and then like you said, that, that bobber where the enemy is going, oh, man, he's, got, he's back on track again, you know, and then you, you're, you're going to throw more distractions at you. But yeah. you just have to be, you know, solid in your focus. Well, that's what he's doing. I mean, he's, lo- he's losing his grip on you, and so mm-hmm. he's reaching and grasping to get it back. And it doesn't even matter, like, if it's, not, if it's not even sacrifices. Like, it could be just the fact that you decided on top of your Lenten penances to, you know, to, to throw in, well, I'm going to add, right? So... I'm going to go to adoration a couple times mm-hmm. a week. I like that's one of mine. Um, I'm going to go to mass every single day of the week. Um, you know, I'm going to try to go to weekly confession. Like those are things that you might be adding, and then those are things like, well, you know, the day got out of hand, and one day won't matter, and then the next won't matter. Right. He's trying to convince you and distract you and keep your eyes off of what you've made promises for. And again, why is that, Victor? Because you're valuable. You know, we're not only valuable to Jesus and to God the Father, we're valuable to the devil. Because again, if he can take us away from God, one, in his eyes, it hurts God Mm -hmm. because God doesn't want to be separated from us. He doesn't want us separated from him. He loves us. And Jesus certainly doesn't want that. So the devil uses that to try to take us away and claim us. And, you know, this is the thing that that if if, if he manages to lose you, then what happens to most of us? If we break free from the things in our life that are holding us hostage, if we break free from the change of our wounds and our addictions and our struggles, and we find out that there is a merciful God who loves us and who wants to forgive us and will give us a new way of life if we believe it, then the devil knows, you know, it's like warning, like DEFCON 4, he's going to go do something else. And 
I, again, in a moment of humility, just, you know, this is why he tempts every one of us. I mean, I look at just what's happened with his ministry. You know, years ago, what, five, six years ago, whatever it's been now, I guess seven, you know, sitting in that jail cell on the verge of, of a choice and trying with everything in my, in my heart to choose God and eventually with the strength of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and God's love for me and my wife, right, and everything that she did for me, I was able to get on this path that took away it took me away from the evil one. Now, he's run after us ever since. I mean, every time there's a desolate period or things like that, you know, I know it's because something amazing is going to happen in the ministry. But you look at it like one person being set free. Victor, we don't know this side of heaven, how many mm-hmm. people have listened to this podcast, how many people will help, or the missions. But I know that it's a lot of people that have found God again or grace or an opportunity to believe that there's a chance for them again because of this ministry. And that's one person that God was able to free that's able now to hopefully be able to set other people free along with you in this podcast, right? Because you said yes, there became two. Angel's over there running the cameras. There became three. Deacon mm-hmm. Jeff's been a part of this. There became four. Our men's group, all of these people, and then the countless people that are praying for this ministry have become a part of this simply because God was able to free one person. So I, I say all that not to toot my ho- horn or say, look at me or you or anything else, but to say you're valuable. And so the enemy doesn't want you going to the side of the Father because if he keeps you over here, you're dormant and you're not a threat anymore. And so... We have to make to understand that the reason we're being persecuted, the reason that we're being attacked, the reason that we're being called back to comfort, and 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 we might be finding it difficult in this third week, is because you're taking a stand in the spiritual battle, mm-hmm. right? You're literally getting up and confronting evil in your life, and if you don't believe that, then then it's time to wake up, because anytime you're choosing to let go of comforts and things in your life, you're saying no to the world who is ruled by the evil one and the flesh. Right, you're saying that, and so if you've made those litten promises, this is why he's angry because you're standing in the middle of a battle between good and evil, and you're trying to choose with everything in your might to pull against the bit that he's had on you. That's you know from the things that maybe you've been addicted to or you've been connected to, and you're leaning back towards the good, and he, you're dragging him behind you, and he's doing everything he can to pull you back to him, and so this is this is the thing that his goal is is to get you to give up everything that you're trying because he wants you to turn away from Jesus and turn back to him. And, and so, Victor, we have to remember why we've done these things and point our mind in these moments of temptation back to why we've chosen to step away from things like that in our life. So what kind of major power quotes you got for us? Well, I, know you, I, know I mean, you I don't have a lot of quotes and things like that. I mean, there is one that I saw that was, that you know, St. Rose of Lima. Yeah. You know, she has one where she said, apart from the cross, there is no other ladder by which we get to heaven. Mm-hmm. And it really struck me because, you know what, we were promised that suffering would be part of our faith. I mean, Jesus never makes any bones about that. He never hides it. He's never like, oh, come be a Christian. It's great. But man, these guys are going to be upset when they suffer. Like there was none of that. He was very open in what he said. Pick up your cross and follow me. Lay down your life for one's friends. You know, you will be persecuted. Narrow is the way. Yeah, yeah you will right. be hated. Right. Like, this is difficult. Mm-hmm. And I said it at the mission this past weekend of all those guys from Phoenix. You know, I, you know, and I, I just said, look, if you don't think being a Christian is difficult, you're not doing it right. And that's not a judgmental statement. It's just the fact that we've been promised that it's going to be hard mm-hmm. because it's hard to turn away from your flesh. It's hard to turn away from comfort. It's hard to, way, to turn away from the desires of our heart that we've allowed to be cultivated by the evil one. And, and allowed him to be Lord over, right? right? And, and so when we're turning from those things, they don't want to let go easy. So what she's saying here is apart from the cross, there is no other ladder. So in these temptations, we think, well, maybe there's another way to do Lent. Maybe there's another way to just take this in without having to burden myself, without having to have the difficulties, without having to have the sufferings. There isn't. Right. There isn't. Christ had to suffer. If he had to, you will have to because we have to follow in the footsteps of him. Right, he he is the model for every single one of us in our joy in the way that we treat people, but also in the way that we have to handle difficulties and temptations in our life. If you don't believe that, look at the start of Lent. That's why Jesus went into the desert, not only to find himself true to to start his you know walking in the Father's plan for him, but also to give us the model that yeah, even the Son of God is going to be tempted, and to show us that through those temptations, there's a way for us to win too, and that's through Him and calling on His power. So, yeah, if we think that we're just going to find some other way to heaven besides doing the hard things, then 
quit believing that. Mm-hmm. And right now in this week, you know, if you're feeling these temptations, start to, to think Jesus had to suffer. So why not rejoice in the fact that I'm called to suffer in that way too? So, you know, let's talk about some of those high to how to's, not high to's or haikus, but how to's. You know, the first one I would say is what we alluded to a minute ago. Like, if you're struggling in this, remember your why. Like, for most of us, you've been listening, to, most guys that are probably listening to this podcast, you've been listening to us for a long time. I mean, I, I heard a guy last weekend tell me, I, I went back and listened to every single episode. Oh, goodness. I've heard that a couple of times, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the beginning. Was, we didn't know what we were doing. A learning curve. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry for the horribleness that was our first, you know, however many podcasts. But, like, if you're listening to this podcast, it's because you're de- you're desiring yeah. a deeper relationship with Jesus. You're desiring a, a, a to be the man that, that you're called to be. You, you've heard that there's a possibility for you to be better for your wife and your kids, and you have that desire within you, and you're trying to live it out. So remember your why. I guarantee you for everybody that is, is listening to what we've said and, and giving up hard things this Lynn, it's because you really believe it's possible for you, and, mm-hmm. and your why is because you're probably doing it for other people. But first and foremost— for God who wants you to be a better man. So remember that when those temptations come up, don't think, oh, this is hard and I need to give up and I need to go back to these things. Say, no, I did this for someone I love, right? First and foremost, God and his son, Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And secondly, my family, my wife, my kids, the people I want to be better for in my life and hold true to that. Take yourself to those memories of the times that you failed and that you wanted to be better and remind yourself of those things that that's why you're grinding it out right now is to try to work alongside Christ and walk alongside him in his passion and his sufferings and him to in his temptations to be a better person and to use his strength and to take on that yoke right a yoke right. has two places for two oxen take on that yoke and depend on him so that's the the important part is remembering your wife first um, you know, I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Please jump well, in. Well, I'm just saying, you know, it's it's resetting our mindset, too, because, you know, I mean, a lot of us kind of like think not only our faith is part of our culture, but uh, but we get to look beyond that. Culture is great, but we have to look beyond this, not just a social club yeah. that we go to. There's more deep, you know, involvement in the church and in the faith. And just think about like in, back in the days where the church was being persecuted before, you know, Constantine, you know, made it the— the, the the law of the land in the Roman Empire. I mean, people were being persecuted. Like, if if you were to show up for mass in the catacombs, you were afraid because someone may be an informer there and you all get killed or captured. Yeah. So just going to get the body or just to listen to a message or to be together in a group of three or four more people, you know, that it was a crime. But you still, that people did it. And we have to realize that, yes, we're not being persecuted anymore in the sense of the world persecuting us, you know, but we're being persecuted spiritually by the enemy. And we have to realize that even though the tactic isn't in our face physically as it was back in the day, you know, it's still present in a different form. And we right. have to know that the tactics that the enemy is using is something that it may be subtle at the time, but it is detrimental to Amen. ourselves. Yeah. Amen. And that's the thing. Like, uh, you know, we have to we have to start saying to ourselves and preaching to ourselves the truth. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, this is difficult. This is hard on me. This is something I need out of my life. And, the, and I feel myself wanting to go back to it. Admit that. Be vulnerable with that. You know, yes, this is a struggle in my life, and I'm having trouble dealing it with myself, and then take it to the one that can help you, Jesus. I mean, calling him to help you in those difficult times of temptation. You know, he called on his on 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 his father in those times in the desert, and, you know, and, and, and in Scripture and all those things. You know, he went back to quoting the Torah, obviously. Mm-hmm. There wasn't, you know, the Bible around. Jesus was walking around. But like the Torah, he went back to the Word of God and called on his knowledge from the Father to beat back those temptations. So call on Jesus so he could take you to the Father and give you that same strength, right? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but me. Call on him. Believe in what he said and take that truth to heart and 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 and, and use him the way that he wants to be used, not in a, in a, in a um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, a, not a totalitarian way, but a uh, but just in a way of use. I can't mm-hmm. think of the word I'm trying to say, but like not in a way of I'm using Jesus like like taking advantage of him. But he wants you to go to him, so go to him. You know the 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 next how to would be flip the script. Like look at the fact that the fact you're being look at the fact you're being tempted. I can't even speak. Flip the script. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> look at the fact that you're being tempted as you know with difficulties and these pains as a sign of hope. Mm-hmm. Right. Look at this as a sign of hope that if you're being tempted, then that means that you're going in the right direction, right. that you're turning the right way. And you now have the attention the attention of the evil. one. Don't get caught up in the negative. Oh, great. Now I'm going to be attacked. And now this is getting harder and harder. No, look at it as like, man, this this I, have, I can use this for hope. 
because I've attracted the attention of the person that didn't really care what I was doing before mm -hmm. because I'm making the right move in my life. So we need to look at that and flip the script and just say, you know, if we're, we're experiencing that hardship, it's because I'm on the right path, right? And I'm going the right direction. So again, we feel this in the ministry and Victor, I used to lament over it, but now I'm like, all right, Lord, thank you for whatever you're fixing to do. That's amazing because I'm getting the heck beat out of me mm -hmm. right now. And I'm willing to take this because I know you're going to do something beautiful with this. And the ministry is going to do something. And usually every time that happens, like something next level is what we're doing, right? It's like, oh, this idea comes and we start doing this and the devil knows it's coming. So he's getting in front of it to try to stop it. But Jesus runs over it like a freight train. If we're just willing to jump on that train with him and believe that we can get through these sufferings and these temptations and that there's hope in them, right? So the last thing I'll say is a how-to uh, building on that path of hope is look at the examples the apostles gave us in Acts, Victor. I mean, we look at it, and in, in Acts 5, 41, we have the verse that says, and they, as they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. Now, that verse is in the midst of Acts when Peter and John and the apostles are just jacked up on the Holy Spirit, and they're going out there and they're preaching, and they're converting people left and right. And so people go and, and, and tell the Pharisees, well, they've been in the temple preaching and so they arrest them, and they put them in jail, and then they escape mm -hmm. that night. The angels help free them, and nobody can figure out how. And they go looking for them, and they find them in the temple again preaching. So they arrest them again. They take them in front of the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they're afraid to, to kill them because you know one of, the, one of the Pharisees begins to speak about, look what happened when we've done that to somebody before. Mm -hmm. you know, it just grew their thing, so don't kill them. So instead, they flogged them and beat them in the hopes that they would give up what they were doing. But it says here, the apostles were shouting for joy as they left the council because they, and they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer for the sake of the name. So in these temptations, in these struggles, in these, these tactics of the devil that hurt and that are difficult and are stressful and, and they make us feel weak, rejoice in the fact that you've been found worthy to suffer. Mm -hmm. Rejoice that you have to go through suffering in the way that Christ had to suffer, not as dramatic, not as difficult, not as, as painful, but that you have been called to suffer in the way that he suffered and that you could tie that to his suffering and rejoice in it because you're on the right path, you're doing the right thing, and you are now being freed from the things that have held you bound. Like this is what we need to look at. The same way that those apostles were overjoyed, or over, were overjoyed and rejoiced that they were found worthy to suffer, do that same thing in the temptation. Flip the script on the devil and look at it and go, man, I must be really getting my life in order. I must be going down the right path because now I've got a bullseye on my back where I didn't before. That may sound weird to people, but I'm, I, trust me, it will not when you come through the temptations and you realize that, yes, it was difficult, but look how great your life has gotten when you've surrendered these things that Jesus wants out of your life. So my brothers and sisters that might be listening to this, as we come to the end of this, we've gone through the how-to, we've talked about the difficulties, we all know we're there. We're all going to struggle every single time we try to turn away when we have that repentant moment and that metanoia moment where we're going to turn to the thing, the only thing in this world that will bring us what we're looking for, joy and happiness. We're going to have those moments. We're going to struggle in them. You're not alone. Quit believing you are. And don't give in to the evil one who's simply trying with all his might to scratch and claw to bring you back to that place that you don't want to be. Find yourself worthy to suffer. Rejoice in that and feel good that, hey, this is a, this is a time period in my life where I'm having to experience difficulty, but on the other side of it waits the person that experienced difficulties that were similar. And he came out of that tomb joyful, rolled away. We had an Easter after a good Friday, and I will have that in my life if I continue to go through Lent with this mindset of not letting anything bring me away from the Lenten penances and promises I've made to our Lord. He didn't give up on you. Don't give up on him. Stay striving. Keep your head where it needs to be and believe that there is hope that comes after the suffering. My brothers and sisters, thank you for listening today. If you're struggling with this, find those people in your life that can help you, that can keep you on track. Reach out to us if you need help and get in these groups that we're trying to start around the country so that you can find that solace not only in our Lord, but with one another. Victor, let's take it to prayer here at the end, okay? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord Jesus, you never promised us that following you was going to be easy. In fact, your whole life was an example of how many trials and tribulations we'll have to face in following the Father's will. Help us to remember that it is through the difficulties and the sufferings that we will find the path to joy and to eternal life with you. And Jesus, as we make our way alongside you this Lent towards the cross and your passion, 
Help us to remember not to focus on the negative side of our temptations, but to rejoice in the fact that we have been found worthy to suffer. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the, Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, amen. amen.